What's up, everyone? Another edition of Between the Ears. I'm Skylar Callahan. That is Christopher Hall. An interesting uh, game this past weekend between West Virginia and U Albany. 21 0 lead. The Great Danes battled back, made it a little interesting there for a little while in the middle eight of the game. And then West Virginia did what they were supposed to do, put away an FCS team with pretty much uh, the ease that you would expect them to in the, in the second half of the game. But defensively, this was not the uh, the picture-perfect type of game that you would have hoped for and probably took a little bit longer to get to that comforting part of the game where you had a significant lead. You could play some other guys. I know Jordan Leslie played some freshmen early in the game, but still you would have liked to have got them probably a half or so uh, of work this past week, and they were not necessarily able to get exactly what they wanted to get done because they were able to hang around for a little while. So, Chris, Miles Burkett throws for 306 yards in this game. They had six pass plays that went over 20 yards, two of which went over 40 yards. What is wrong with this defense? More importantly, what is wrong with the secondary? Uh, they're still learning to play together. Um, unfortunately, part of reality is college football doesn't have a preseason, and this is a set before conference play is the preseason. So they're still working out some kinks. Said in the beginning of the year that West Virginia is going to have to rely on their offense to outscore teams the first month because this is a whole new unit, and it's just going to take a while for them to get comfortable. It's just kind of is what it is. And looking at some numbers, probably going to back it up that pretty much since they've hit the reset, they've had to you know think of Beanie Bishop, Charles Woods, all these guys that that got comfortable as the season went on. The defense got better. So just with all these new guys, it's going to take a while for them to get their feet under them. Um, said it in the Penn State game that they were overplaying. That's what the coaching staff came out with after watching the review. And they're still a little bit overplaying, still cheating a little bit. Um, and it will get cleaned up. Again, if you if you look back at the you know, November, the last two years, the defense was a lot better than they were in September. So no, um, the receiver that played well. Was an Oregon recruit, quarterbacks, Wisconsin recruit. You look at the passes, the guys were open, but they were also really good passes, like right on the money. So it it that yeah, in an ideal world, you want them right up, you want them to be a top ten defense right, right off the bat, but West Virginia just hasn't had that luxury. They're still yeah. trying to catch up uh with their roster. Still a lot of young guys on the roster. A lot of the linebackers are getting sucked in on some of those uh middle routes. So Yes, it is a concern. I'm not trying to downplay it, but at the same time, it, it's no reason to panic whatsoever. There's a history of the defense improving. They will get better. They know the rest of the Big 12. So no, I'm I'm probably a little bit more concerned on the pass rush right now than I am the secondary because of some of those Good. deep balls. If you get pressure on the quarterback, those passes yeah. aren't working. So well, that's really where that lies with me right now. Get a better pass rush, which they will get better. Uh, the secondary will get better. You just want them to get better, better quickly because in two weeks they play Kansas. I'm glad I'm not the only one that thinks this because I was kind of starting to think I was a little crazy there because even after the game, like immediately after, I said it on the post game show, like didn't look great by any means. You look at the numbers and it's like, holy crap, they give up this many passing yards to an FCS team. But I really wasn't ready to hit the panic button because like you said, this is a team or a defense that is in years past has gotten better as the year has gone along. And when you look at Jordan Leslie's and I put uh, this, this in my article earlier this morning, Jordan Leslie's defenses at West Virginia have ranked number one in past defense in the big 12 in 2020 third in 2021. They had the, the really bad year in 22 where they lost Charles Woods in the first game of the year, their number one corner and they finished ninth. And then last year they were seventh in a 14 team league. So they've really been about an average or better pass defense since he took over the play calling duty. So are they going to be that again this year? I don't know. There's still a lot to be determined and we'll, we'll, we'll learn a lot this week because Pitt likes to throw it. But I, I think there's just so many new pieces to this secondary that that gets overlooked by a lot of the, the, the casual fans. Like, 
you just think, oh, they're playing U Albany. This should be a game where they they shut out this team. They should hold them to 150 yards passing, whatever, 80 yards rushing. That's just not how it goes. And I mean, you you Albany has been a better team in the SCS of late. Went to the semifinals last year. I know they they had a lot of turnover, but that's still a team that's going to play well this year in the CAA's. They're going to make some noise. And I don't think that it's a, a, a huge, huge concern that's like, oh, my gosh, these guys are getting burned off the snap. They're getting pushed around. They're getting shoved. They're they're allowing way too much separation. I don't see that. The only thing that I saw in the game on Saturday was just they just weren't playing the ball in the air, and then Neil said it in the post game. They just misplayed things. They missed – you know, had they had some uh, some missed assignments in terms of their drops. Some of their drops weren't deep enough or shallow enough or however you want to look at certain some of those certain plays. But to me, I'd much rather have the situation they have where it's just a matter of fixing the depth of your drops and making the right plays on the ball versus getting shoved around at the line of scrimmage and how allowing guys to just blow right past you. I don't I don't see that on when I turn on the tape. Yeah, it's <clears throat> Again, I think a lot of it's going to be a pass rush, and they're going to face better offensive lines. And when you look at it, Albany had first and goal from the two and couldn't get in. Yeah. So they're, they're it's you know we live in an age where everything's focused on negative, um, but there was a lot of positives. I think one of the key concerns is you know they're not getting takeaways like they should. Like that's that's another thing that's going to have to improve, and it's something that they just haven't had a lot of luck at the last few years they just haven't had enough takeaways and they've had opportunities again they had opportunities again this week they had a couple of dropped interceptions rodney should have had one talked about that going into the season like when they were heading into penn state they had two drop interceptions last year at penn state that could have turned the game around so that's something that that's really concerning like they gotta they gotta take advantage of those opportunities and you already have a piece you know a good chunk and then based on history that they're dropping interceptions so that's definitely got to change but overall, especially in the game, this early in the season, they're playing base defenses. They're trying to still figure out these guys' strengths and weaknesses. And, yeah, you can get an idea in fall camp, but it's different in fall camp because these guys get used to the receivers they're lined up against every week, their tendencies. So as the season goes along and they get more film on other offenses, it'll it'll steadily improve. Um, again, you know, my, my bigger concern is still the offense right now because – like repeating that at the beginning of the year, you knew you, you should have known the offense has to score. And even though the offense throws a lot of young pieces as well, your, your, your hope is that they can still produce a lot of points. And you saw that against Albany. They went up 21 nothing. unfortunate fumble by Jaheim White. Uh, that kind of flipped that flipped it there early. And then green responded with a touchdown. And it was, that was their, that was Albany's last touchdown on that poor team. So they shut them out the second half. So it's not, it's not doom and gloom as everybody wants to be. If you look around the country, a lot of teams struggled week two because especially teams that had big opening week games, like what happened to Notre Dame, big opening week <laughs> win, losing Northern Illinois. Could you imagine that if that had happened here? Like, absolutely, yeah, it, it would be, I mean, look what's happening in Notre Dame fans <laughs> right now, but. That's kind of where we're at in college football because of the transfer portal, because there's so much turnover that a lot of these games early in the year, you're going to probably continue to see more surprises until really everything kind of gets locked in, getting the nuts and bolts are tightened up in this NIL thing. You get kind of more stability because week in, week out. I mean, at the end of the day, these aren't professional athletes. <clears throat> these are just college kids that only get a certain amount of time to prepare and they can be exposed really quickly. And that's what kind of happens. And then you got to kind of catch up the next week and try to fix yourself again while preparing for another team. So you're going to see a lot of stuff like this. And to compare it to the rest of the country is, a f is fair because, again, look what's going on ar around the country. Like there's, what, one team right now that can be consistently good every week, and that's Georgia. And prior to that, it was Alabama. Yeah. So it's – there's not a there's not been a lot of teams throughout history that were just dominant week in week out like that's just not that's not how college football works. So, no. Yeah, you're go, you're going to have bad weeks. You might get exposed at times. What should you got really exposed against Oklahoma last year? But they were exposed because Oklahoma had a lot of talent. You're not going to face that kind of top talent week in week out. And we both said coming this season, look, they're not ready 
to be on the national stage yet. Just look how young this roster is. They're not completely together. So, yeah, not a surprise. Um, wasn't really a surprise from the kid from Oregon. Like, it, it, you can go back to Oklahoma State game last year with Alan Bowman. That's the best. If you if you look up his highlight passes, passes against West Virginia were his best passes probably by far. They were just dimes, like right on the money. So, yeah, unfortunate. Coverage was there, but they still got the yards. So it's just sometimes it's luck. Sometimes you just have a bad day. But I'm not, there's no reason, absolutely no reason, to hit the panic button. I'm again, I'm more concerned with the defensive line right now. I thought the pass rush would be better at this point. Um, thought Martin would probably be a little bit better than what he's been so far. So they got to get to the quarterback. You got to get pressured, not let them get comfortable. And again, kind of got to get that offense rolling. So sometimes the best offense can be the best defense where they feel the pressure get them uncomfortable, make them feel forced to make a play, and then that'll really start helping your defense when you can get the offense uncomfortable by putting points on the board. I mean, it's not like this team gave up 51 to Abilene Christian. Cough, cough, Texas Tech. Like, this is a completely different thing, and I I just think the expectations are a little ridiculous, and I get the diehard fans. Like, they want to see those games just get ugly from the beginning because, quite frankly, that's really the only game – that you kind of know going into it, you're going to win pretty handedly and you just like to see a big score. And, and I get that. But again, going back to Jordan Leslie, I, like, I don't understand the hate towards Jordan Leslie. Yeah, they didn't play well. Like, I, I completely understand that. I'm not saying that that should be forgotten. They know that what they've put on tape through these first two weeks is not good enough. They understand that, but they also understand that it's things that can get fixed, they will get fixed, and they look like a much better unit moving forward. If you go back since Jordan Leslie took over this defense in 2020, they had the weird year in 22 where really the whole team just stunk, if we're just being quite frankly honest here. This defense has been pretty decent. Like, there's not been one just absolutely miserable defense. 22 was not good but they bounced back at last year in 23 and were a middle of the pack team in the big 12. Like this is not a defensive coordinator that is sitting towards the bottom of the big 12 every single year in every single statistical category. Stop freaking out. Like I, I understand your, your worry because you gave up 300 yards to an FCS team, but you still won by 31. You still only gave up 14 points. You shut them out in the second half and what he missed like two series because he he took a hit on the sidelines and I think they may have scored on one of those uh, series if I, if memory serves me right so I, I just I don't understand the hate for Jordan Leslie I get the passion I get the frustration but just let's see this thing through and, and for the fans that say you know to us well yeah what it's only been two games but you know they haven't looked good well, yeah but like like Leslie said in his press conference you're not just going to shut it down two games into the year. You're going to find answers. That's what they've done every single year since he's been here. They've found answers. They turned a guy like Beanie Bishop, who was a a career role player, into a consensus All-American. The guys they brought in through the transfer portal this year had more of a proven history than Beanie Bishop did when he came here. Garnet Hollis has played good football before. He's going to play good football again. Aiden Garns played really good at Duquesne. He's going to be good here. It's going to take time for him to make that jump. Shaheem Joseph played well at Northwestern. He's going to play good here. They have talent. It's just going to take time, like you said, to learn off each other, learn how to understand their role in the system. It's two weeks, guys. Like, we're we're not even in the conference play yet. Yeah. And, and again, I mean, you know, the the deep ball that Aiden uh, Garns got beat on, he was pushed. Like, that was offensive pass interference. Like, it was pretty clear to me. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, everything's an overreaction. You know, if you take the Jaheim White fumble, they probably go down to make it 28-7. And and then they may get the ball back, and it may be 35-7 at halftime. So, offense is still a bigger concern for me than the defense. They've proven, again, they've proven that they'll improve. They've got some guys. They've definitely got some studs on defense. A lot of them still young. The transfers that came in, they're just learning. And in a game like Albany, they're gonna they're gonna test some certain things, especially in man coverage, see what they can do. And you're gonna get beat. You can take chances against you in Albany. Like that, it's okay. So yeah, they're gonna get. They're gonna get. They're they're gonna get everything that they need. Like two games still isn't a lot, but they got a lot of data from it. 
and see what they're, they're able to do, where they can put guys, how they how they work, how the safeties work off all this or barns, and just kind of work with it because they're going to see you know a variety of offenses in the Big Twelve, so they've got a lot that they're going to have to work through, and you know Pitt's going to be a good example because they love to always pound the ball, and they're kind of shifting more towards a spread, uh, a wide open offense, I guess, and you're going to get a lot of passing. Uh, passing opportunities how they handle it how this week will be i don't want to say determine the rest of the season good barometer in a sense, yeah because it, it's a good it's a good point for where west virginia how they're going to enter the big 12 because their offense is starting to look more like a big 12 offense that we've seen the last few years rather than that ground and pound we're just going to run it down run it over your face so we'll we'll, we'll see this week how they adjust because I, I, they probably still haven't even done a lot of the stuff that they're going to do defensively yet. They're going to give teams a lot of different looks, and it's still going to be an adjustment period. They're still going to get beat. It just kind of is what it is at this point. Like, biggest concern for me, defense, try to get those takeaways. Like, stop dropping interceptions. Get some momentum from the defensive standpoint more than the coverage, if that makes sense. Yes, good coverage will lead to interceptions, but when they gift them to you, Yep. You got to take advantage. I think that to me is the biggest concern because when they gift you something, you got to take advantage of it. And that's just something this defense hasn't done. And it's something that they work on. Like the DBs work with the receivers so they can catch the ball. They're using jugs. Like it's just not translating to the field yet. And you would think, you know, prior to last year, it was like, well, where's West Virginia's luck? Like everything doesn't bounce their way. Houston last year, the Hail Mary didn't bounce their way. Neil Brown said, hey, that should have never been an issue. You play better. You, you take it. You take it. You take that that luck away from them. So, and then you know TCU. All of a sudden, they get a finger on the ball on the field goal, right? And then they're like, yeah, it's about time we catch a little luck. So maybe it starts to turn a little bit here. Once maybe back half season, that they can get some of these takeaways that are gifted to them. You don't need luck. You just need to start making the play. And maybe it starts to turn around for them. And that to me, again, pass rush, get the bunnies on defense, and then when you when you create turnovers again that gets in their head right like it becomes a mental game for the other team where hey it was a sigh of relief we didn't turn it over to oh no now we got to be per- perfect it becomes a mental thing so for them just get the turnovers because that that'll that'll solve a lot of their problems when you can start forcing those turnovers and that they're, they would be unforced turnovers really just catch the ball yeah yeah i mean you just look across this defense i mean there's there's, there's so many either first year guys or guys that are are playing significant snaps for the first time. I mean, up front, like for Torma Moba, he was a role player last year. He was a situational guy. Um, you know, Eddie B, he's now out probably for at least a couple of weeks. So TJ Jackson gonna step in, Troy transfer. This is his first year in the system. You go to linebacker, Josiah Trotter. He's only played two games in his career. Trey Lathan, he only played four games last year. You you go to Reed Carrico, first year guy in the system second there is full of one year guys anytime you have that much turnover regardless of sport regardless of level it's not going to look like a polished product at the start it's just not and when you have this many guys and on, on one side of the ball particularly uh yeah you're gonna have some games where you might give up 300 yards to an fcs team but it's okay because the talent is there it can be fixed and listen we're not this isn't like a, a a point where, you know, three or four weeks from now, if the defense is still struggling, you're going to come back to us and say, oh, Skylar and Chris were telling us, yeah, this defense was going to be so good. No, 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 no. We're just saying right now through two games that this defense isn't terrible. There's concern, but we're not ready to hit the panic button just yet because there are reasons why, if you look back at the past of Jordan Leslie's defense, plus the players they have in that defense right now, there's a lot of reason to to be optimistic about this group. So, I don't know. The defense has got nine, a long way to go. There was nine tackles for a loss Saturday too. So there's not enough yeah. talking about the rush defense <laughs> last week. Uh, that was better. That improved. Oh, stop. Yeah, stop there's me. Too much, the, there's too much on the pass defense, and rightfully so. But there is, you know, reasons for it, and. Again, not worried about it. They just got to get their no. eye discipline. It improved a little bit. And again, they just made plays. That kid is super fast. 
He, he was recruited to Oregon. We know how Oregon uh, finds those guys. So Albany got some good, you know, some good guys that went to, mm-hmm. po- I guess, power five, power four schools now um, that were offered at power four, sco- four scholarships that are not playing the FCS level. So they were recruited to play at that level. So it's not a surprise they had success. I think the biggest surprise is, again, when when an opportunity presents itself with a turnover, they're not capitalizing. And to me, that's the biggest concern because that's been a concern the last few years. And I, you know, I don't know how that I'll say can address it when they they use they're practicing ball skills and pra- you know, practicing catching the ball. Of course, it's a little shorter when they're trying to throw it. It's a little different. You're in a different position um, on the defensive side, but. Again, when it's right to you, you've got to find ways to come up with those plays and flip the script on that offense and make them feel the pressure. And you can only make them feel the pressure if you're making the play. So pass rush, I think, is far more concerning than the secondary because those deep passes are because they have too much time in the back. And if you're not getting that much pressure on them um, in those situations, especially third and long, then, yes, it's going to be a concern because it does become a tre- chess match. And I think some of it is they're just not disguising their blitzes very well. That's not the scheme. It's the players. And that has a lot to do with just being, you know, anxious and trying to trying to get by the guy and you're, 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 you're giving up your tail. You're giving up the play. So that's something that they'll work on. They'll do a lot more movement. You'll see a lot more movement in the secondary, a lot more shifting in the defense when, once Big 12 play starts. They just haven't done a lot of that yet. They couldn't do that against Penn State because it was the opener. Like it yeah. just wasn't going to happen. There's a the talent gaps far wider from Penn State than it was for Albany, and they're not going to show a lot for Albany. So yeah, not concerned. They're going to do a lot more different things defensively as the season goes along, especially against Pitt. They're still going to have to make plays, and when you play on the road at Pitt, those again those turnovers that they gift you, you got to take advantage of them and flip the field and give your offense a short short field. I mean, it's it's the same thing with a quarterback. Like, you can't hold on to the ball for nine seconds because your offensive line can't hold up for that long. Right. Same thing on defense. If your defensive line doesn't get after the quarterback or, or make him force the, the throw out early or just force him into a throw, the secondary can only hold up for so long before the, the play breaks down and all of a sudden you got guys playing Helder Skelter and somebody's going to pop open. So they'll get it fixed. Uh, But more on this defense, more on how West Virginia can beat Pitt this week in the Backyard Brawl on tomorrow's episode of Between the Ears. Make sure you hit the subscribe button here on our YouTube page at West Virginia on SI. Be sure to follow us on X at SI underscore WVU. For Christopher Hall, I'm Scott Callan. Thank you guys for watching. We'll see you back here tomorrow.